just when we reach that, you know, that mountain peak, like, right? We just finished this huge part of post-production, finally got all the ADR done, and now it's, now it's gone. Almost, almost. We, we were smart enough to make a backup, so we always had two sets of the footage, um, but we, we hadn't backed up our project file in a month, six weeks. And so we lost several hundred dollars worth of, you know, 14 terabytes total of storage. We lost a month and two weeks of post-production work that wasn't backed up. And we had to get to picture lock and record score in about another month. I mean, everyone, the semester was ending. Everyone was going to go home. And we were going to lose our orchestra if we didn't record those weeks in April. And so it, it sort of became a race then to redo what we'd done. And, and when something like that happens, you just, you just want to kind of throw in the towel and give it all up. Why? bother and put all that work in again right so it was it was hard it was hard to pick up the pieces and keep going forward I, I almost didn't get on the plane to fly out for production and I almost threw in the towel then too because <laughs> it, it was hard I had to stop everything and we created an Indiegogo page and just told everyone who had supported us up to this point what was going on. We have a single backup copy of the film, and before we can proceed, we must make an additional backup copy because we will not risk losing the entire film. And that, that's costly. We have to replace both our laptop as well as all the drives. Please consider donating, supporting us, liking it, following us, but also just helping us tell this powerful story about depression and anxiety and how we don't need to give up in the hard times. I then spent the better part of 30, maybe 40 hours or more just copying all the 16 terabytes of footage to one new pair of hard drives. And then we took the time to be careful and we actually geographically removed these now two extra hard drive sets to Rebecca and to myself, especially as I was prepping to leave California. The re-editing was excruciating. The film ultimately is in a much better place now, but it was painful. We had made such crucial decisions, certain scenes and whatnot. We lost about maybe three months, four months of worth of work, but Andrew Daughters couldn't come back to complete the progress because he had moved on to other projects. It was just myself. And from this point, a lot of this really rested on my shoulders. It was a lot. And it also pushed right into our score and what we were gonna do for recording because Jordan couldn't start writing for the scenes until he had picture lock and the picture lock was delayed. And changed multiple times because of that as well, because we sent him that and then scenes got cut or rearranged and um, you know, you can't really score to a picture unless you have picture lock. So it was a bit of an issue. So I got started with the project really early on. Um, it was during my sophomore year, I believe, that we had started talking about it. And I know that by July of 2018, so still months before Rubaru was ever shooting, um, I had already been writing themes and working on some of the music because I had been getting the script all along and working on writing on writing the different character themes and knowing where, where the music would start and where it would go. Um, so I was collaborating on it as early on as the process as you ever would as a composer. Um, and then over that summer, I finished fleshing out those themes and kind of figuring out what that would look like. And then I basically just took a break from the music until the film was fully shot because it didn't make any sense to score specific scenes um, until we actually had a scene to score to. So then I kind of had a chunk of not much. And then as soon as the film was shot and we had a full cut, it was a lot of work really quickly. You know, when we lost the hard drives and had to kind of redo the whole last month of edit from scratch, I mean, it was getting down to the wire for him too. And so we would, we would kind of picture lock pieces of the film sequentially. And so as soon as something was not gonna change anymore, we'd like send it off to him. Okay, Jordan, write this. So he would then go take his thematic ideas and write something for the score, or write something for picture, show it to Marco, get notes. They would, they would do their thing. 
<clears throat> um, so instrumentation, I'm also taking note of because now since we are recording live, mm -hmm. it's actually important what's in the scene and not that it's just anything there. Yeah. Uh, so I'm reducing as much of it as possible okay. to be as small of a group as possible. Right now, everything I've done is piano, reduced strings, which is the assumption of two or three violins, one or two viola, one or two celli, um, and then solo violin and solo clarinet, because okay. we can also use clarinet really easily. I'd record that separately with Selena, no problem. I'd check with her. Okay. Um, oh, should we are clarinetist? Oh, that's awesome. Yes. So that is yes. a really, really great, easy... Uh, her, her and Andy, both of them, no problem to get them in to do something if yeah. they need to separately, whatever, solo stuff. So that's... Um, uh, what was our thought of horn? Do we entirely remove ourselves from the horn category? Horn, I... So I haven't gotten anything where I felt like I needed it. Copy. Okay. okay. It, at this point, if I get to something and I feel like we do, I'm not opposed to it. Uh -huh. I just need to carefully look at how to do that. Okay. At the moment, the one bit where in one of the tracks that I sent you initially, it had horn. In this version, it's clarinet now. Okay. Which I think blends a little better. Okay. No, again, like I, I just prior prior to you sent me the horn, so I was curious yeah. if that was his thought process. Gotcha. The main thing is still that brass will be harder to get to sound good with the rest of the group. Gotcha. Because a reduced orchestra, it's not uncommon to have a string orchestra with a woodwind or two in it. Yeah. Having a, you know, brass uh, in there yeah. is a little bit more abrasive. Okay. You know, a horn's not that bad, but it's enough that it, uh, that we'll just have to see. Okay. Ooh, comes is this? Ooh. This is transitional. Oh, oh trans. Still. Oh, dang it. I didn't mean to pull the transition up. Oops. Oh, well. I meant to start with the opening, but I guess we'll start with the uh, zero, zero X. <laughs> okay. Um, so none of these are mixed by any means. Okay. Uh, let me check. This is going to be loud. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't that I'll, exciting. I'll, I'll, hey, you don't understand. I've been staring okay. at a screen that's just true. like nothing changes. True, true. Except for the number of like data increasing. Like, Ooh. I do have music. All right. Um, okay. I will, I'll just do a mock fade in here okay. just because it would be faded in. Fading it in through here once she kind of looks back. Just a little bit. And I know there will be dialogue that we don't have. No, yet. that's not dialogue. Oh, no dialogue. Uh, or potentially, my apologies. You're right, that might be a VO. Okay, that um, is still, to still, my knowledge, yes. maybe. It's a maybe. I think Andy just wants to go hard, no VOs as much as possible. Okay. That's absolutely needed. And it works either way. It's yeah. basically just the little portion of the love theme so it kind of come i think bringing it in when she looks up and then again when the coffee shop audio comes in that'll come in and this will just fade out so I think that yeah it, it simple. works yeah it, it just it's the theme without it being the theme and yeah. it's it's there just to fill the space but also just like that you know that there's something between them and um, that that is the first time you hear his portion of that. Okay. And that's also where you're starting to like, oh, he's interested, you know. Okay. So that to me is his, is kind of playing off of him becoming more and more interested. Okay. As they're just getting to know each other. Okay. Cool. Start like forward. It. Yeah. Um, Any you play play with the theme again. Play it again for me. Just mm -hmm. uh, let me bring my this. Ear. Actually, I don't think there's anything there during the actual walking scene. Oh, I should probably turn the music up. Yeah, once it's mixed, if we bring that down to where it's like, the, it almost blends the, because that's a solo violin, right? That's multiple. Okay. That technically is a recording of three violins. Oh, okay. Which is about the sound we'd have and just be a live sound. Gotcha. I think for me, I'm just sticking out in my ear, is that it almost feels, the f yes, it works for the scene. The question is, is whether or not, because we're not going to continue that into the next scene, and it's just a transitional piece, mm -hmm. does it need to have that? The second part of the phrase? Yeah. No, it doesn't need to. Yeah, I mean, I could just bring the, the theme in, he like here, slow down a tiny bit, and that's fine. It, it, maybe it's just the fact that it sticks out so much and maybe, maybe if it was just brought down and blended more into like the actual baseline 
Yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. I mean, because it could basically be uh, not that. <laughs> Just the clunking yeah. piano that what doesn't work. I done? Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, because it could basically just be it. Yeah. Like, you don't have to have a whole, oh, there's the melodic phrase. It can just be, it, it is the melodic phrase, but you're not hearing it as that. I, I think that's more just because it feels like you're just okay. dropped in a piece of music versus having it like, no, this is intentional choice. So, like, it's there, but it's it's back, it's very backed off. It's like, just allow you to sit in the moment. So in this, you'll hear there's a violin solo part and there's a clarinet solo part. And it, it may be a little bit hard to differentiate the two, um, but you have the clarinet part doing Charles's theme and then you have the violin part doing Elizabeth's theme. And so the two fit together really neatly where violin plays a line and it lifts up and then clarinet descends and kind of answers it. And it does this call and answer throughout where they play along at the same time. then that just transitions back into the darker Charles Depression theme. So you'll hear in that you have the violin line, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, which is the basis of Charles's theme. And then the Elizabeth's theme is a violin line, which I can't sing it that high, so we're going to go lower. Ba -da -dum, ba -da 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 -dum. And then those continually play in and around each other throughout that which is a, just a quick little snippet of that. And then throughout the rest of the film, really, um, they, they interact in even more interesting ways. And then, of course, changing the harmony or the specific notes that they're landing on, it becomes much darker than we were hearing it there. I, I think there's two big things that had really worked. Um, the biggest is that you wanted me to actually collaborate on it. You weren't looking at it as, I want you to write the score for me as much as, I want to work with you to tell the same story. And so that really lended itself to, to this musical storytelling that I was trying to achieve because in the end, we were both trying to tell the story the best way we could. And so in some moments, there were bits where I would say, I think this is what we should do. And this is what the story is trying to tell me. A and some of those you had said, oh, I actually don't like that. Um, I can think of one specific moment in a part of the family theme that we had used that we're not going to play it, but th there was a bit where I had put in kind of a, a sour note that didn't make much sense in hearing it, and the samples didn't help it either, because hearing it mocked up within a computer is really different than hearing the live players play it. So that was one of those examples that I really appreciated that you had let me say, no, let's do this, even though you didn't really like it, but then I, it worked in the end. By the time we recorded it, you heard what I was hearing and then putting it in the picture. I think it really works. And you'll hear that moment in the film. I think that helped with the storytelling. It brought a lot more interest to that moment. I remember sitting in on the first rehearsal session, just listening to the sound envelop me. Okay, here is our one. <laughs> Guess what? Bar three is piano. Bar four is also piano. Five more are arpeggiating piano. Bar six is a chord on piano. And here's bar seven. That was so beautiful. The score truly was haunting, gorgeous, peaceful. It was a lot of work to sit for hours listening to Jordan and just hearing the logic behind why he wanted to do what he wanted to do. As he explained it to me, we listened to it and watched it and it made complete sense to me. By the time we, we got to score, I think that was one of my favorite parts of the, the entire 
Ruburu Saga, um, partly because I got to play for some of it. So that semester, I was actually concert master of our school's orchestra. Uh, I was a music minor at the time. Um, and so I had a really great relationship with the conservatory and the orchestra conductor, Mr. Owen. And somehow I convinced him and them to let us take orchestra rehearsals for two weeks and record the score live for Ruburu. And so, yeah, I don't know why they said yes for that when we had other concerts to get ready for, but I wasn't, you know, gonna ask why or complain. <laughs> So for the actual recording itself, I mean, this was another day where I, I got to wear lots of different hats simultaneously, which taught me a lot, but, but was also exhausting. I think I was just as tired from our recording days as I was from some days on, on set for filming. Because <laughs> I, I wasn't just playing in the orchestra. I mean, Jordan was busy writing the music and finishing parts. so. Then it was kind of down to Marco and I and whoever we could drag in to help actually set up the recording. And I mean, from getting chairs in across campus for all the musicians to sit on to microphones for every section to hundreds of feet of cable from all those microphones going to the recording devices. It was a whole production and then lighting it so people could see and we could get behind the scenes photos. Jordan had about a little over half the film scored at that point and he was working overnights sometimes getting ready you know not just writing this stuff but also making parts for all the orchestra members to read and to read it cleanly because we still didn't have a lot of time to record All of us in the orchestra, we sat down, we put the pages in front of us and we recorded and we had so much to get through in so little time. We really only had time for about three or four times. It had to be perfect by time three, let alone you know, at least by time four. Uh, that, that is a D sharp to a D natural. Cause that is slurred, not tied. And then also from 10 to 11. You see behind the scenes all the time of like John Williams or Howard Shore, you know, headphones on, clicking their ears, you know, seeing picture in front of them, recording, you know, conducting and the score coming alive. And that's kind of what it felt like. It was it was pretty magical. We had click on and headphones for everyone in the orchestra as well. So we could all, you know, keep time and keep together a little easier. So, so it was a lot. And then I had to sit down and play. <laughs> right. And kind of push all that to the side. And that's when Jordan and Marco really stepped in and Chloe and really led the sessions. And I just got to play for those couple hours, which was so much fun. Um, and Jordan led it like a like professional. I mean, he was so easy to follow with his, his conducting and he gave really great concise notes to the orchestra. And it was pretty cool seeing how far performance came from those first takes till, you know, takes three or four when we had to move on to the next one. but the development of the music follows the development of the story really closely. With there being a few different character themes, there's a family theme that represents family, there's Elizabeth's love theme, Charles's love theme, and then basically a depression theme for Charles. 
and each of those themes has variations of basically being a darker version or a lighter version, um, depending on orchestration, the key it's in, and all of that. And so as the characters are actually developing throughout the story, each of their themes develops along with them. So if you were to sit down and listen to the score album from start to end, you'd hear the story each character is going through, even without seeing any of it, um, because it was it, it was very intentionally fleshed out that way. And even just an example of that is the range um, of the orchestra. When it starts, it's much lighter, and as things progressively get more intense relationally, it, it fleshes out. So it starts up in the upper register, you don't have much bass voice. And then as it goes on, it gets much lower, giving a, a much deeper and a much richer uh, overall sound and timbre to the music. Not easy is not easy is one way to put it. Yeah, and that that's one of those things again that I appreciate so much is being able to collaborate on it because I wasn't gonna do the mixing very well, so I brought in Chloe who could do it a whole lot better than I could, and I wasn't able to do all the orchestrating, and I didn't want to do all the orchestrating. I wanted to focus on writing the score to the scenes, so bringing in Joseph to work on that allowed me to focus more on actually scoring the scenes well. You know, they weren't just writing the stuff; they were having to make all the parts look nice and readable. Put in dynamics and put in, you know, articulation markings and put in, you know, cues for the musicians to help us understand how to play it better and how to play it to match Jordan and Marco's vision. Oh, what have I done? Charles, you are not alone. Thank you. You're welcome. Why? Why what? Why? Why do you care so much about me? You don't even know me. Just because I don't know you doesn't mean you're not worth saving. Your life is precious, so don't waste it. I, um, I'm sorry. I don't even know your name. You don't have to apologize. My name is... Wait, what did you say? Why are you spinning? What's wrong? Charles, what's wrong? The second half of the score, we didn't have any rehearsals, and that's just the nature of filmmaking because of time frames and the way that works out. So we, we just went in and recorded it, so they were sight reading. And again, the importance of it being perfectly legible, the importance of all of the audio equipment being set up properly and ready to record... Um, and then even things like making sure we took notes during the, during the actual recordings to know, okay, this worked really well in this part. This part we may need to pull out or adjust that. This take was great. This take didn't work. We don't want to use that. Because then the back end of it, of course, is actually mixing it. So you have a mixed version taking all of the mics and all of the different um, audio recordings, putting them together onto the um, onto the film version, and then there's the album version that means more work and remixing and going over it all again but to do that well you have to have recorded properly and you have to have taken the right notes and all of that and th there are things we messed up on there are things that were learning experiences and there are things that i think we did really really well and uh, another element of that was we recorded the orchestra by itself the piano was only ever me recording it into the computer and then the solo clarinet and violin were both recorded separately by themselves. So Andy recording the solo violin parts was never in the room with Noah on clarinet, and he wasn't in the room with the orchestra when he was playing the solos. So that is a testament to how well they did with being able to play by themselves, hearing it in their headphones, and actually making it sound like they're in the room together. Because that that's, that's a really tough skill to have. 
and I th they all did it really well because when you listen to it, it doesn't sound like, oh, you piecemealed all these different parts and put them together. It sounds like a group playing together in the same room. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, what have I done? Charles, you are not alone. Thank you. You're welcome. Why? Why what? Why? Why do you care so much about me? You don't even know me. Just because I don't know you doesn't mean you're not worth saving. Your life is precious, so don't waste it. I, um... I'm sorry, I don't even know your name. The primary function of the film score is to support the story being told. And a lot of the times that means that the story being told is being told more through visuals and through the acting and through what you're hearing than through the score. So throughout the film, well, the score, of course, is a really big character and it is telling the story. It, it was oftentimes needing to be underneath what else was going on. So I couldn't have, you know, I couldn't have Charles's theme conflicting with what Charles is actually saying, um, et cetera, throughout the film. So in doing that with the end credits, you're not hearing anything else. The only thing you're hearing is score. So there was nothing to conflict with meaning that I could flesh it out a little bit more and give not necessarily more complete versions, but more thought out versions of the themes. So the orchestration is a little bit richer. It's a little bit um, where sometimes in the score itself, you may have less lines going that all of a sudden opened up and there's more parts happening at once. And there's a little more motion and it's essentially a medley of all of the important themes in the film. Listening to the recording of the actual score, just listening for three days of just recording the violins, the cellos, hearing the piano ring out and just permeate through this, this, this piece of art that I had been pouring my life, blood and sweat and tears into. There's nothing more satisfying than sitting down with the final score being mixed.
but it also pushed us back. It pushed our whole post production timeline back. So I think that's why we're we still haven't finished it yet because then you graduated. Marco Thomas Soprano. Yeah, Marco. And I had to move to Texas. There was just no opportunities at that time for me to stay in California and I had to go home. And it was a very long drive. In total, maybe 25 hours, 22 hours. Drove through the night and uh, got to Texas and the good old car, picture car of the movie, decided it was time to rest. And I think a lot of 2019 for both of us in different ways was sort of resetting or just needing to take time for, you know, life and transitions. Um, you know, I was directing a big project that fall with the school and, you know, he was, you know, found his new job, you know, as a media director for a church. And so it was just a kind of a turning point for both of us um, in different ways. But work progressed slowly on the film. I mean, really, Marco, he bore the burden for it all on his back you know, after you know after that um, he had all the files he was you know doing all the sound bit by bit minute by minute through the film both a little more settled we want to you know let's get this back going we put all this work in let's get it over the finish line let's get this out somewhere right and so people can finally see it and then you know march happens and you know we all know what happened My fellow Americans, tonight I want to speak with you about our nation's unprecedented response to the coronavirus outbreak. Today, the World Health Organization officially announced that this is a global pandemic.